Hello, learners, and welcome or welcome back. Um, in this video in the calculus primer series, what we're going to be focusing on is what is right in front of you right now, which is the properties of logarithms. Now, I have already gone ahead and listed out some of the properties for you in pink. So that way, as I go through these problems, you understand where I'm getting them from. Um, but you can probably Google properties of logarithms and get a more extensive list. Uh, but these are the ones that I notice are used a lot in AP Calculus. And I also would like to note that in AP Calculus, we, for the most part, not 100% of the time, but for the most part, we restrict our study of logarithms to the natural log, which is, L, is represented by ln. And if you ever do see log um, and without a uh, base, such as right there, usually you know there's a number right there to indicate the base. We assume that this is the common log, which is the log base 10, okay? Um, of course, that happened. Okay, so let's just kind of talk through these really quick, and then I will quickly go through these uh, example problems. So the first property we see here, the log of a, b, where a and b are any, um, oh, let me think, logs, depending on if they're shifted or not, they have a restricted domain. So let's just say they're not shifted. They will have a domain of any real number strictly greater than zero. So we have the log of a, b. If we expand that, you can expand that to the log of a plus the log of b. Similarly, if we have log of C over D, then that will uh, expand to the log of C minus the log of D. What I have after that is representing the power property of logs, which basically says if your um, argument, in this case our argument is the letter A, represented by the letter A, and it's raised to the power of B, well we can just throw that B right down in front, and I always do this as an illustration to my students, then it can become B times log A. Okay, and then log of one is equal to zero. Um, and that's true as you can see here and here. So it doesn't really matter if it's a natural log or log base 10 or log base two, because we, we should remember that this idea of a log, so log with the base B, let's say the argument is A, if that's equal to C, well, we have this log loop that says, okay, if this is my logarithmic, logarithmic expression, then if I were to write this in an exponential form, it would be b raised to the c power is equal to a. Okay, and that's our log loop. Now, the reason why the ln of 1 is equal to 0 is because the, the natural log is actually the log base e, which is Euler's number. And um, e raised to the power of zero, and anything raised to the power of zero will always get you a result of one. So that's why this property exists. And then we have the inverse property represented by this green highlighted area, the natural log of e is equal to one, okay? All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna kind of go through these. So if you need to stop and uh, work through them at a slower pace, or you wanna work, bef uh, work them before I get to them, then pause the video and play the video uh, at your leisure. So number one, the log of six times 11, if we expand as the instructions say, we would get log six plus log 11. Okay, and that's it. In number three, we want to expand this expression and I notice I have a um, exponent up here, so I am gonna throw it out front and I'll get five log and then six over 11. And then you can go about this in one of two ways, but since I'm going to expand it, I'm gonna write it all out. Um, and I'll get five log six minus five log 11. Number seven, I see that I have the log of a quotient. Uh, so that will give me log of X minus the log of Y to the sixth power. Log of x is good as it is. However, we want to bring that six down in front of the log y. And there you have it. Number eight, 
we have the log of the product of AB all squared. And what I'm going to do is throw the two down in front of the log. And then expand accordingly. There you go. Okay, number 11. So this one I'm actually going to rewrite first and then I will expand it. I guess maybe rewriting is a form of expansion, but I have the log of the cubed root of the product of x, y, and z. So I'm going to first rewrite this as log of the product of these three variables raised to the one third power, right? So remember, if you ever have, let's do a little detour here. If you have the nth root of x to the m power, writing that as a radical exponent would be x to the m over n, okay? And since all of these x, y, and z are both all raised to the first power, then I can rewrite this cubed root as, you know, x, y, z to the one third. All right. Now I will bring this one third down in front of the log. And then one third log x plus one third log y plus one third log z. And there you go, that's as expanded as we want it, okay? Okay. In the second half of this uh, exercise page, it says condense each expression to a single logarithm. So what we're going to do is now we're going to take this large expression and make it smaller. So log 3 minus log of 8 would get us a log of 3 over 8. In number 15, I have 4 log 3 minus 4 log 8. And what you should notice is that if I use the power property. I'll end up with this. So you notice both of these numbers have an exponent of four. So I will rewrite this as log of three eighths to the fourth power. Now you could very well just leave it as three to the fourth over eight to the fourth, but um, I am trying to condense it into the smallest way, I guess, simplified way. So this is how I'm going to leave it. Uh, number 19, I look at both of my log terms and I see they both do have the same base, which is three in this case, and they both have the same coefficient out in front. So I know I will have the log base three of u to the six plus log base three of v to the sixth. And since this is a sum of two logs, I know I'll have log base three of u times v to the sixth power. And there you have that. In number 20, we have the natural log of x minus 4 times the natural log of y. So let's go ahead and do this first. Um, I have the natural log of y to the fourth. And since this is a difference of two natural logs, we will have the natural log of x over y to the fourth. You'll notice that when I do natural log, my L kind of gets a little cursive-y um, and I don't do it for log for some reason. I think it's because in my background, the use of natural log is so prevalent that I would just copy my professor and my teacher's writing, which is a lot of time wasn't cursive. So the natural log stays that way. All right, last two. So I recognize in number 23 that they both have the same base, so I will be able to combine them. Um, but they do have two different coefficients, so I'm not going to try to do anything fancy with that. I'm just going to do u to the 20 plus log 6v to the 5. And since this is a sum of two logs that have the same base, then I can combine them. Um, and I'll have a log of, log base six, I apologize, of u to the 20, v to the fifth. And no, you cannot combine that any further because u and v are both of different bases. So that's it. Okay, and then finally, 
Um, we kind of have a similar situation as 23, except instead of a sum of two logs, it is now a difference of two logs. And we will get log base three of u to the fourth minus log base three of v to the 20. And that will condense to log base three of u to the four and v over 20. Okay. And there you have it. If you need any more practice, um, you know, there's plenty of places for you to go to practice, such as Khan Academy or an old textbook, um, or maybe reach out to your teacher. But if you have any questions on the problems that I solved here or any properties of logarithms, leave a comment below. Um, and if you are my student, then you can just reach out to me in Canvas. Uh, but until next time, thank you for tuning in.